Hello YouTube, it's Lane here with Hobbies Man once again, and today we're going to be doing another manga review. Today we're going to be looking at Katsura Akira, which is a short story collection. It just has two stories, but the second one is quite long. And it's written by Akira Toriyama and illustrated by Masakasu Katsura, the guy that did Zet Man, uh, and Video Girl, Video Girl Eye, and a bunch of other series that are pretty popular with the shonen bros that collect out of print series. Um, and actually it's something that I, I'm really interested in as well, but um, I don't collect that of print series because I don't really enjoy the the fact that I have to pay two, three, four, or five times more than they really are worth um, just because they're antiques, right? I don't have any problem with anyone that sells them or anyone that um, profits or wants to collect them, right? Uh, it's just not my style, so I kind of stay away from it. But um, I'm pretty interested in Katsura and I hopefully, you know, hopefully either Panini Manga Mexico releases more of his works or more likely i just buy them from spain uh because they have a lot of his works available over there so yeah the publisher here is panini manga mexico of course and you can see that on the spine right there this is their logo um sorry i just noticed it's a little beat up so yeah um the demographic is seinen based on the second story the first story seems more or less shonen but i'll just go with the with the more important uh, distinction, although the uh, age range that it says back here is 13, so maybe it's a shonen, I'm not sure. They did mention seinen magazines in the Q&A section of the, of the book, so that's why I'm saying seinen, I don't know. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. It's for men, and it has some elements that are a little bit more risque than usual. That's all there really is to it. So yeah, the genre here is purely sci-fi, this is more or less a bunch of stories about the Galactic Patrolmen, so, you know, so similar to Jock and Jacko. Um, so it's it's just sci-fi. There's elements of martial arts here and there, but they're not very uh, important. And obviously this does not have an adaptation because it doesn't really seem to be all that big. Uh, but they could do some, like, a movie out of it. I don't know. Like, maybe it's not really something they want to do because it doesn't really fit into the, uh, you know, brand exactly. Uh, of what Akira Toriyama does. So yeah, um, like I said, the premise is really difficult to kind of explain. So uh, I'm just gonna tell you, there's two short stories. One of them deals with um, a girl uh, and this teenage boy, which are these characters back here, who happen to go to another planet. And uh, the second one is about this galactic patrolman here that goes to Earth to try to save them from something that's occurring, right? So. That's basically all there is to that. So yeah, let's talk about the plot line here. For story one, uh, we have uh, the, the the story's name is Sa Sa Sachi Chan Gu, uh, which is a horrible name. <laughs> it's a very difficult name to pronounce, and also I just don't understand what the heck the point of it is called. Uh, of the point of it for having that name is right. So yeah, the story is basically that there's these octo aliens, these people that look like octopuses. They're oct octopi, and uh, they, they're aliens and they come down to earth to find two strong warriors to help them defeat these people that are um, what's it called uh, harassing their village uh, these evil characters are called Mil and Cho and Kolod so uh, Milk Chocolate is, is the name of their uh, of this evil team which is pretty funny and um, yeah so they, they go to this place that's kind of arid there's nothing there but there's this kid who happens to be a powerful warrior his name is Sarito so the Octo aliens grab him and then they go to Japan to go find uh, this warrior that's very important uh, and they actually end up meeting his daughter instead and so they take his daughter with them and they go fight uh, Milk Chocolate and uh, what happens is that Sachi actually ends up being a very meaningful uh, fighter after what seemed to be a lot of gags about her being kind of just a gal um, and so eventually they, they manage to win and uh, the galactic patrolmen show up at the end and they uh, what's it called they just provide them with 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 some um, with some like uh, what's it called like a sheriff tag uh, making them galactic patrolmen in honor of their their service and then we get this uh, resolution, which is uh, some rewards that the Octo people give to um, Sarito and, uh, and and Sachi, but uh, Sachi kind of ignores it <laughs> and she just gives it to Sarito. So he gets two gifts and they're actually really meaningful to him and to, to his people. So it's actually quite good. I, I really enjoyed this story. Um, initially, I didn't really care too much for it, but it was pretty good at the end of the day. Um, 
And story two is called Jija, and I think it has four chapters. Uh, I can't remember because it stops numbering them. Uh, and then the last one is just called the last chapter. And I didn't really feel like looking through and seeing how many there were, but I'm pretty sure it's four. Um, and so we get introduced to this galactic patrolman that shows up. His name is Jija. He's actually a little tiny alien that operates a water powered power suit, which is this thing right here. And uh, he's on a scouting mission on Earth after one of his colleagues, Stess, sent out a message saying that the humans weren't worth saving. Uh, and then uh, Yija decides that he's wrong, that there's something else going on. And he meets these two humans, um, which are named, uh, let's see, Yukio and Kade. Kade is a, is a girl. And he meets them. And he learns that there's this guy called Vampa, as in vampire who happens to be some sort of like Beerus looking alien. And uh, these giant fleas attacking a bunch of places on earth, a lot of places in Japan, of course. And um, it turns out that Vampa is actually being controlled by Stess. And so there's a big battle. Yija learns about humanity and why they are the way they are. It seems to be that, uh, you know, very differently from a lot of aliens, humans have a very distinct and very powerful sense of of, 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 uh, of fulfillment when they do something, which is very different from other aliens. And so it makes them very different and very susceptible to being uh, horrible, <laughs> apparently, something like that. And, you know, of course, there's a bunch of shenanigans that ensue with an alien into humans interacting, plus that big final battle, which is very cool. And I really enjoyed it. And I think Yija was a great story. Um, I'd be interested to see this published in English because it'd be really cool. And I think a lot of Toriyama fans would probably like it, especially because there's a novelty there with the fact that the art style is different. So yeah, um, in terms of characters, we just have Sachi and Sarido for story one. And for story two, we have Jija, Vampa, Stes, Yuki, and Cade. And uh, the world building is mostly just explaining what the Galactic Patrolmen are for both stories. There really isn't anything else beyond that. Um, I guess you have some aliens, so you get to know where they come from, but it, it means nothing because you don't actually go to those planets or, or you do, but they're very basically the same as Earth. And uh, in terms of art style, there's two different ones, actually. Uh, the, the segment creator, uh, Katsura, actually decided to go with a very stylized uh, style, uh, obviously, <laughs> in, in, in the first story and goes with a little bit more uh, like easygoing style in the second story. So um, I think the style difference is pretty interesting and it adds a unique feel to each story. And it's also just kind of cool. Like it works really nicely. I really enjoyed it. I think both art styles are great. They're really not that different, but there is a distinct uh, kind of Western cartoon feel to the first one, whereas the second one feels more generically Japanese. So that's pretty cool. Um, in terms of fan service, there's a bit in both stories. It's not really anything particularly uh, obscene, uh, but it is a little bit more leaning towards the Toriyama side of things than it is, you know, the general, like, modern style. So, yeah. Other than that, there really isn't too much to say. The rating is a 4 out of 5. I really enjoyed it. I'll definitely read it again sometime soon. And it's a pretty interesting novelty item for a fan of Akira Toriyama. I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of Akira Toriyama, but I am getting back into enjoying his stuff. After all, Dragon Ball was one of the first things that I consumed as a kid where I was fully aware that it was an anime and not just some funky cartoon. Um, so it's pretty interesting. I, I quite uh, am attached to the original Dragon Ball. I've been reading it right now this month, and I thought that reading this was cool. Also, I just really like the thematic style of it, the um, genre and the very cool artwork here. And I wanted to check out something by Katsura as well. So. It's pretty interesting. There's a lot of interesting stuff in the back as well. There's a lot of design sketches and, and how they came to be and why they decided to make things like that. And also a lot of interview questions talking about the collaboration that these two manga had. And it's pretty interesting. I quite liked it. I thought it was really cool. The other thing I forgot to mention is that it also comes with this cool little um, board that, or like post postcard, I guess that tells you, you know, hey, this is the, the work who it's done by. And then it has this little calendar back here that shows you all of the other standalone Toriyama works. So you have Kowa, which is available in English, Kajika, which I think is not available in English unless you get the Toriyama theater thing, Nekomajin, again, 
Uh, I think that one's not available in English. Sandland, that one is available in English. Jocko's Space Patrolman, uh, which is also available in English. It's a prequel to Dragon Ball. And then Katsura Akira, which is not available in English. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. I quite like that. I thought it was really cool. And um, yeah, overall, I enjoyed it. I'm definitely going to read it again. And like I said, it's a great novelty item for a fan of Akira Toriyama. So yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know your thought. And thank you guys very much for watching once again, even though I've said it like three times already. So yeah, see you guys later.